The Kansas City Chiefs just left us all speechless. So we're going to be going through that and three other stories in today's video. So make sure to like this video. And if you want more Kansas City Chiefs news content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting that red button down below. The first story is, the reason expert says Kansas City Chiefs will be perfect for Louis Reese Zamet. An NFL expert has spelt out why the potential signing of former Welsh rugby star Lewis Rees Zamet by the Kansas City Chiefs is such huge news. The 23-year-old is rumored to be signing with Super Bowl champions the Kansas City Chiefs either today or tomorrow. Speaking to BBC Radio Wales' breakfast program, journalist and NFL writer Ben Isaacs was asked if it was right to get excited. I think it's time to get excited, he said. When I was on last week, I said I expected him to find a team after his pro day, and his pro day was actually disappointing. He didn't show off his skills quite as well as he could have. But the teams will have watched a lot of footage of him playing rugby. They will have got him into their buildings, run some tests on him and spoken to him, and he will have impressed people. He is an impressive young man. As a physical specimen, he's got a good head on his shoulders. Although I expected him to find a team because all teams are now allowed one extra player if they're a designated international player, what is key is that this is the perfect landing spot. Not because they're the Super Bowl champions, not because he might hang out with Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift, it's because what he needed was to be on a team that had a really good quarterback and a really good head coach, and it happens to be the Kansas City Chiefs have the best QB in the league and the best coach. Because of those two, especially the coach, are known for finding creative ways to utilize his unique skills. And that's really what was needed with him because it can't just be that he's fast, let's give him the ball. It's not going to work like that. They're going to have a bit creative, a bit weird with the sort of things they use him for. It's so perfect, I don't think anyone could have dreamt a better story for him. Host Dot Davies asked if it was too good to be true. To that, Mr. Isaacs added, the Kansas City Chiefs have been the best team in the NFL over the last five years, but have had a bit of a revolving door in certain positions, in that they'll bring somebody in who doesn't cost a lot of money, turn them into a bit of a star in their system, and then, when they want a lot of money, they go somewhere else, but not being as successful. They've a core group of players, but the rest have kind of cycle in and out. This will work out well for him. We've got to temper our expectations. There's a very good chance he won't play in a regular season game next season, and fans shouldn't be too downhearted if that happens. You've got to remember his development is way behind that of the other players coming into the league who have been playing U.S. universities for years. Just this week, the NFL has tweaked its kickoff rule. For a while, no one could return any kickoffs. The ball was boomed out of the building, and no one had the chance to bring it back. It feels to me like this is the reason they're getting him in because he always looked like he would great returning the kick because of the way he can move, it feels like the Chiefs will have seen that rule and the way he plays and the way he can move his body and thought, do you know what? We could get him returning kickoffs and he could be a real weapon on the field. Asked what signing a contract will mean, the writer replied, it will mean he will be on the expanded roster that the teams start with in the offseason. The offseason has basically begun now and they can sign nearly 100 players, but that has to be whittled down to the 53. All he will sign now is a contract that will take him up to the start of the season. If he doesn't make the final roster or practice squad roster, then he's done. He'll have a certain amount of money, but he will then be a free agent out of work again. Really, this is only going to take him up until about August, but this is the thing. The practice squads are expanded. The practice squads don't really get to play. But if he has to sit and learn at the Kansas City Chiefs for 12 months, then that will be great for him. Just because he's signing a contract, it doesn't even mean it's six months. This is incredibly exciting. I grew up in Cardiff as a massive NFL fan. The idea that a kid from Penarth could be playing in the NFL really sets me off when I saw that news at 6 a.m. I was absolutely thrilled, and any NFL fan in Wales should be so excited by this. The second story is, what does the Lajarius Sneed trade mean for the Chiefs? Over the weekend, the Kansas City Chiefs dealt star cornerback Lajarius Sneed to the Tennessee Titans for a 2025 third-round pick, while swapping 2024 seventh round picks. Sneed was rumored to be a trade candidate from the start of the offseason when the Chiefs placed their franchise tag on him. After Kansas City signed Chris Jones to a massive contract extension, the Chiefs didn't have enough salary cap room to ink Sneed to a new deal without mortgaging future financial security. 
the Titans signed the star cornerback to a four-year, $76 million deal with $55 million guaranteed after acquiring him from Kansas City. The minimal compensation that the Chiefs received for sending Snead to Tennessee may be an indication that Kansas City wasn't interested in signing him to an extension. Chiefs general manager Brett Veach has shown a knack for identifying and drafting defensive back in the late rounds of the draft. The rise of Trent McDuffie as lockdown corner gave Kansas City's front office some flexibility with Snead and may have led Veach to believe that the team's secondary could maintain its success without adding more burden to the Chiefs' defensive payroll. Veach's decision to trade Snead freed up almost $20 million in cap space that Kansas City can now spend on free agents who are still on the market after the initial waves of signings this month. In the end, the Snead trade was a win-win-win for all sides involved. The Chiefs accumulated more draft capital, Snead got paid, and the Titans bolstered their defense with a star cornerback. What does the luxurious Snead trade mean for the Chiefs? The Kansas City Chiefs still have several free agents that are available on the open market. One of those players is wide receiver returner McCole Hardman, a former second-round selection who has spent parts of all five of his NFL seasons in KC. Hardman has been a member of each of Andy Reid's Super Bowl teams to some extent and has three rings to show for it. In fact, Outside of a brief stint with the New York Jets to begin the 2023 campaign, the 26-year-old playmaker has never played for another organization since entering the league in 2019. He has appeared in 77 total games for Kansas City. Having said that, Arrowhead Pride analyst Mark Gunnels expects Hardman's five-year run of Chiefs contributions to end in 2024. With the Hollywood Brown addition, I would be surprised if the Chiefs brought Hardman back, Gunnell stated candidly during the March 26 edition of his weekly column, Let's Argue, adding, It's just hard to see a role for him at this point. Gunnell shared this opinion after a fan voice that Kansas City should re-sign both Hardman and veteran left tackle Donovan Smith. Hollywood will provide that deep ball threat this team has missed since trading away Tyreek Hill, Gunnels explained. As mentioned above, it's also likely the Chiefs use one of their first two picks at receiver. The Brown addition makes Hardman somewhat redundant, as Gunnels alluded, but that's only because the Chiefs already have Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony clogging up roster spots. The Arrowhead Pride writer believes that Moore and Tony are more likely to stick around than Hardman, considering upside and contract. As much as fans want Sky I Moore gone, it's very unlikely the Chiefs will give up on their second round pick after two seasons, Gunnels reasoned. He also called it unlikely that KC replaces Tony with Hardman. The Chiefs could shed Tony's 253 million plus cap hit if they were to find a trade partner sometime this offseason. If not, releasing him would cost them the same amount. Barring some sort of releasable offense, it feels like both Moore and Tony will get one final opportunity with KC in 2024. As for Smith, Gunnels replied that he wouldn't be opposed to bringing back on a team friendly one year deal to compete with Wanya Morris. For the past year or so, it's felt like 2020 first-rounder Clyde Edwards-Hilaire would eventually leave Kansas City after losing his starting job to current running back Isaiah Pacheco. Gunnels even predicted his departure back on February 24th. Although a CEH exit is certainly still on the table, the 2024 free agent doesn't feel like as much of a guarantee to sign elsewhere as he once did. After all, the Chiefs still need a backup running back and Edwards Hilaire does not seem to have much of a market around the league. The third story is Andy Reid explains why Patrick Mahomes will do even better with Chiefs in 2024. Despite the Super Bowl success, the Kansas City Chiefs offense had its fair share of struggles last year. However, Andy Reid believes the addition of wide receiver Marquise Hollywood Brown for 2024 will be the help Patrick Mahomes lacked in 2023. I think Marquise gives you that speed element on the outside, or inside for that matter," Reed told Jeff Kerr of CBS Sports. He's played all the different spots. I think he's a smart kid. He'll complement with Rashi and Trav well. Brown was one of the most notable wideouts in the open market, and he turned down money in order to contend next to Mahomes and company. He's certainly the kind of target the team was looking for after lacking reliable players at his position last season. I gotta see how he does. I think his main thing is just staying healthy. It's been an issue up to this point, Reed added. He looks like he's in great shape. He's in a good frame of mind. 
Rookie wideout Rashi Rice proved the only reliable wide receiver for Mahomes in 2023, as the rest of the players in that group often failed to catch passes and made costly mistakes throughout the regular season. We'll have to wait and see, but on paper, it looks like Mahomes will have another dependable weapon besides Rice and tight end Travis Kelsey. Mahomes himself proved to be excited about Hollywood Brown's arrival, as the former Baltimore Ravens and Arizona Cardinals player showed glimpses of his talent during his time in the NFL. He just brings a ton of dynamic playmaking ability in, Mahomes told ESPN. I think just being able to a guy like that who's ready to come in and work and to be hungry, I've already talked to him there will be a lot of throwing sessions in our future. We're going to try to keep this thing rolling. We'll try to go back to that Super Bowl again. According to Diana Rossini of The Athletic, Brown agreed on a one-year $7 million deal worth up to $11 million to join the Chiefs. 